Hi guys, how are you? I hope you've all had a really good weekend, well rested, productive, however you best wanted your weekend. Um, and I hope you guys are ready to take on this upcoming week. So um, yeah, good job on your topic proposals, by the way. I heard they were really great. Ernest just finished um, grading all of them. And I think the grades will be in soon, if not already. So make sure to uh, check that out. Um, let me share the screen and we can start talking about this week's topic. So yeah, um, hopefully you can see the presentation. Um, today we'll be going over week seven. So congestive heart failure, heart attack and cardiac arrest. Um, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy this lecture. I, I really like this topic. So um, yeah, so let's start with the stats and symptoms for congestive heart failure. So what is congestive heart failure? It's basically a progressive chronic condition in which the heart is unable to pump blood efficiently to the rest of the body. Um, each year, more than 200,000 cases of congestive heart failure occur in the U.S. alone, and um, that rate is only increasing, so make sure to pay attention to prevent yourself from getting a higher chance of getting congestive heart failure or any of these cardiovascular diseases. Um, so yeah, um, let's move on to the next slide. Um, causes of congestive heart failure, or just like heart failure, um, a lot of um, these are kind of like obvious, like for example, pre-existing conditions that a patient might already have that damage or weaken the heart. Um, those conditions will definitely um, increase the chance of getting heart failure. Um, another um, cause of congestive heart failure is when the heart becomes too stiff. Um, with stiffened ventricles, not um, the ventricles don't fill properly and that leads to irregular beats. Um, additionally, if we have stretched ventricles, that will lead to inefficient blood pump. So over time, um, because of these causes, the heart won't be able to keep up with normal demands and the heart becomes inefficient in pumping blood to the body. So um, yeah, basically if you look at the diagram, you can see that certain conditions, including narrowed arteries in your heart, um, this is called coronary artery disease, um, normally by like plague. We talked about this, I think in lecture four maybe or high blood pressure gradually leave your heart too weak or stiff to fill and pump blood correct it effect, blah, 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 efficiently. So in some cases of heart failure, your heart muscle may become damaged or weakened and the ventricles stretch or dilate to the point where the heart can't pump blood efficiently or effectively throughout the body. And this is why the heart will no longer be able to keep up with the normal demands to pump blood. And that's why heart failure normally happens. So um, yeah, let's go on to the next slide. Um, so now we'll be talking about um, symptoms and treatments. Um, just like we've been talking about throughout this whole class, um, symptoms or treatments, whoa, um, treatments to symptoms um, normally involve like lifestyle changes or um, symptom help, uh, just because it's kind of hard to treat congestive heart failure, especially for long periods of time. So what they do instead is they have a lot of medication that helps like with the um, symptoms. So that way you can better um, handle um, your congestive heart failure. So um, symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue and weakness, swollen legs, rapid or irregular heartbeat and reduced ability to exercise. And treatments, um, they involve low sodium diet, increased physical activity, um, quitting to smoke, tobacco, defibrillator, pacemaker and coronary bypass surgery. I think a lot of these that are cardiovascular, cardiology related, um, Asa talked about in the last video. So be sure to check that out for review if you don't remember some of these terms. Um, yeah, let me see. Um, okay, yeah, I um, something I wanna say before I move on to the next slide is that not all conditions that lead to heart failure can be reversed, um, but treatments can improve the signs and symptoms of heart failure and they can help you live longer. So. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we will be moving on to cardiac arrest. So what is cardiac arrest? Um, cardiac arrest is a sudden loss of heart function in a person who may or may not have diagnosed heart disease. So um, for statistics wise, um, more people actually are have cardiac arrest than congestive heart failure. I think each year more than 350 thousand emergency medical services assessed out of hospital cardiac arrests in the US, like um, a year. So that's that's 
really insane. Um, yeah, so let's move on to causes. So uh, for most common cause of cardiac um, arrest would be coronary artery disease, which we talked about a few slides ago. Um, less common causes would include major blood loss, lack of oxygen, very low potassium, heart failure, and intense physical exercise. Um, yeah, let me see. Next slide. So now we'll be going over symptoms and treatments for cardiac arrest. Um, so for symptoms, we have loss of consciousness, which is the main symptom of cardiac arrest. Um, other symptoms include unresponsiveness, um, chest pain, fainting, collapsing, shortness of breath. Um, and for treatments, they involve um, immediate CPR, defibrillator, blood pressure support, and antiarrhythmic support. Um, yes, um, let me see. Next slide. Um, now we'll be looking at congestive heart failure and cardiac arrest risk factors and preventions. So like I said, a, a lot of these are intercorrelated. So because of that, a lot of the risk factors and preventions would look the same, um, like age, cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, smoke, uh, and whoa, prevention would be no smoking, physical activity, and um, healthy weight. So just make sure you're exercising, you're eating well, um, you're not smoking. Yes, cool. So let me see. Um, Cool. Uh, next slide. So now we get to compare and contrast um, these um, heart conditions that we mentioned earlier. So for heart failure, we have heart inability to pump adequate supply of blood to the body or condition or collection of symptoms that weaken your heart. Um, and for heart attack, one of the main arteries of the heart gets blocked, causing the heart to not get enough blood flow, usually due to plague. Um, we talked about this and cardiac arrest is when the heart stops completely or has a dangerous rhythm. So cardiac arrest can sometimes be caused by heart attacks. Um, I think one thing I forgot to mention is that because they're so intercorrelated, um, if you have one, you're more likely to have um, another one. So, and that includes its own. So if you have like experienced heart failure already, there's an even bigger chance that you're going to experience it again because your heart has already been weakened by that first hit. So um, yeah, so now we'll be looking at differences. Okay, like I said, they're all connected, so they're not mutually exclusive. Someone who has heart failure can also experience cardiac arrest and heart attack. We've talked about this. Um, so yeah, so um, the difference between um, heart failure and congestive, wait, um, heart failure and congestive heart failure is that left and right-sided heart failure um, symptoms show slowly over time and congestive heart failure you need immediate help with. So for regular heart failure, we have left and right-sided heart failure. With the left-sided um, heart failure, we have the left ventricle um, where the left ventricle loses its ability to pump blood effectively. And because of that fluid pressure is goes back to the lungs. And for right-sided um, heart failure, most of the time it's caused by left side failure, um, but when the right side falls first, um, the back pressure goes into the veins and that um, induces swelling and congestion. Um, if induced by the left ventricle or the left sided heart failure, um, it would still back the fluid and lungs, and but it would instead affect the right side of the heart. Um, and yeah, like we said, congestive heart failure um, affects you need immediate help because um, there's slowing of blood pump, pumping, slowing of blood pumping out of the heart, back, back up into the veins, swelling, and leading to different types of edema. So um, very important that it gets immediate treatment. And yeah, so these diagrams just kind of basically summarize what we've been talking about earlier. Feel free to go back um, to look at them or pause it the video if you need additional you know, visual cues or visual diagrams. Ah, sorry. Um, yeah, so now we'll be going over heart attacks. If you wanna be super fancy, you can call them MIs or myocardial infarctions. Um, so um, a heart attack um, or myocardial infraction refers to a partial or full blockage of a coronary artery that damages or causes the death in the heart. So one way this can come up is a blockage of an artery because of plague. So yeah, plague is a big theme in coronary or just any heart condition, um, just because it makes it so much harder for the blood flow to go um, 
efficiently and at the pace that it needs to. Um, and so the heart heals through the forming of the scar tissue where the damaged tissue was. It may take weeks or more to heal. Um, the heart can still function if only a part of it is damaged. So yeah, just, yeah. And like I said before, the, if you have a heart attack, the likelihood that you're going to have another one increases. So just, I don't know, eat healthy, brush your teeth, um, make sure plague doesn't, make sure you're taking care of yourself as well as you can. Um, yeah, so now we'll be comparing cardiac arrest versus heart attacks. So cardiac arrest is where the electrical signaling system that keeps the heart pumping malfunctions and stops. And it is a result of irregular heart rhythms. Um, so, and heart attacks, they're damage and death of heart tissue. And it is a result of blocked coronary arteries. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna do some more comparing. So heart failure, um, heart not pumping blood efficiently, varying degrees of severity, cardiac arrest, the heart completely stops and circulation stops as well. And a heart attack is when the death of the heart muscle tissue happens due to blockage. So it's more of a specific range. Um, yeah, so um, because these are so interrelated with each other, the causes are very similar. So we have arrhythmias, which is like irregular heart beating, whether it's too fast or too slow, atrial fibrillation, diabetes, obesity, smoking, anemia, and lupus. Um, I'm not sure if we've talked about lupus. We will in a, a later video, but it's basically where um, um, you attack your own cells, basically. Um, yeah, so now we'll be looking at different symptoms. Um, so cardiac arrest, obviously your heart's done, or no, it's like stopped beating. So there's no responsiveness, um, no normal breathing, um, just nothing. Uh, for heart failure, we have shortness of breath, fatigue and weakness, swollen legs, rapid or irregular heartbeat, and reduced ability to exercise. Um, heart attack, um, that's when you have chest discomfort. Um, it feels like really heavy on your chest. You have lightheadedness. Um, there's also like slight pain or like pressure in your shoulder, arm, um, jaw, neck, back. You just feel really nauseous. Um, yeah, so um, I know these are all really vague symptoms. So um, it's really good if you think if that there's something going on just to, you know, check yourself just in case you don't want to wait until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, like for the summary, like we said, non-mutually exclusive, many similar causes. And yeah, if you wanna go back to review them, I know it's a lot. So yeah, feel free to kind of pause, go back, and then you can continue with the video. Um, oh, okay. Now today we will, or whoa, sorry. Right now we will be going over our case study. So let's go over the next slide. I'm just gonna read over the description because I don't have this memorized, but. Um, so yeah, three years ago, this 46-year-old patient began feeling uncomfortable as she was playing the piano for the Sunday services at a church. She wasn't sure if it was a heart problem or not. All she knew that it was, was that it was really uncomfortable in her chest area, a tightness and a pressure, but it wasn't so bad that she was going to collapse. So she tried her best just to ignore the chest pain and kept playing. However, as the morning progressed, the pain didn't go away and indeed got worse. Finally, she sought out a physician who was a church member who recommended she go straight to the emergency room. At the hospital, they measured her blood pressure, which turned out to be very elevated. It was 186 over 110. Um, yeah, so make sure to remember that the normal range is 120 um, over 80 or to 140 over 90. Um, and she was given nitroglycerin, a, a drug that relaxes the blood vessels and can often help restore blood flow to the heart in heart attack patients. The medication gave her a wha wha whopping headache, a common side effect of the drug. So um, yeah, don't worry. You don't need to note any of these down. Um, we have a summary slide here that I will go to. So yeah, here's the summary. 46 year old female, chest discomfort, pain did not go away for a long while. Blood pressure, very elevated. Um, the given drug, nitroglycerin, um, not a common side effect of a whopping headache. So now we have our question. What does she have? A, congestive heart failure, B, heart attack, C, cardiac arrest, or D, other? Um, yeah, wow, what a missed opportunity for our quiz. That's okay. Um, yeah, guess I'll give you like 10 seconds to think it out. It's like really hard to give you time. 
Okay, I'm assuming that was 10 seconds. Um, if not, you could have just paused it and like waited a little longer to come up with an idea. But yeah. So the answer, oh no, okay. The answer is, da -da -da -da, GERD. So um, the answer was other. Um, GERD is, well, we'll be talking about GERD in the next slide, but it's basically non-cardiac chest pain. Sorry for the trick question, but yeah, at least we get to know more about GERD. So, oh wait, sorry. GERD is basically, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on to the next slide. Um, GERD is basically um, heartburn. Um, it's a common condition that results from the reflux of gastric contents of the esophagus leading to some bothersome symptoms or complications such as esophagitis or Barrett's esophagus. Those are basically just um, inflamed esophaguses, in esophagi, esophaguses. Um, but yeah, um, gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD is seen in people of all ages and the cause is often attributed attributable to a lifestyle of factors such as obesity, smoking, and low levels of exercise. Um, so yeah, this patient's experience is not an uncommon one. Chest pain can turn out to be anything from a less serious condition all the way to a heart attack or cardiac arrest. So it's always good to like always, um, you know, check in with your doctor and make sure everything's okay. But it can be really tough to tell a difference. So, um, but symptoms do differ. So the more you have experience diagnosing patients and um, the more experience you have with, and the more familiar you are with these symptoms, um, the easier it is to avoid heart damage if the pain does turn out to be a heart attack or unnecessary panic if it doesn't. So yeah, I think that's it for the slide. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so now we'll be going over symptoms of GERD. Um, symptoms include heartburn, uh, sour, bitter taste in the throat or mouth, especially after large meals um, and or, or late meals. Um, there's hot sensation in the stomach, excess salivation, difficulty or painful swallowing or unexpected cough. So um, yeah, heartburn. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people use GERD and heartburn interchangeably, um, but just, yeah, basically it's heartburn. Um, yeah. So why does this happen? Um, the ambiguity in the symptoms is caused by the fact that the nerves in the stomach and heart don't clearly signal to the brain where the pain originates. Um, so nerves in the chest are not as specific as nerves in the hand. So that's why um, when, it, when you're having like a discomfort in your arm whilst having a heart attack, that, that's why that happens. Um, yeah. So now we can uh, compare heart attack versus GERD. So heart attack is exacerbated by exercise or severe emotional stress. It may spread to back, jaw, neck, arms. Um, so there's sweating, dizzy, nausea, and difficulty breathing. Um, and GERD is sharper pain in the chest, often pre precipitated by eating fatty or spicy meals and is affected by change in position. It's worse lying down than bending. So um, make sure, yeah, if, if you're feeling discomfort and you're like um, in your chest, like it's not the best idea to lay down if you don't know what it is yet. Um, yeah, so I guess the ending message for this class is just check, check, check yourself. Just make sure um, a lot of times you'll feel like discomfort in your hand. Well, don't be too paranoid, but also just be careful, be safe, eat healthy. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for today's lecture. So yay, we it worked. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or go to office hours um, or schedule office hours. So yeah, um, I hope you guys have a good night and I'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye.